Hey, Ronnie Dahl, four-wheeling in westernaustralia.com and you are watching another camping tips video. I've been asked so many questions about how we keep clean and what we do about showers and all that kind of stuff. So in this video, I'm basically going to cover some tips on how we stay clean out in the bush. So stay tuned. This is one of my new favorite methods of doing things. I've done this for a couple of months now, four months, five months. Well, I've got myself a steel bucket, and with a steel bucket, while you can have fires, you can heat your water up. And it's not only good for doing dishes, but it's also good for washing yourself with. And it's nothing better than a, a nice hot cloth just to wash yourself before you, you hit the swag. So I'll take this over to my swag. So following on from the bucket and the fire tip, when you wash yourself in the bush, get half your towel, dip it in your boiling water. And then swing it a couple of times. Perfect temperature to wash yourself in now. Oh man, that's good. And you can just wash yourself with one of these. It is the most refreshing thing before you hop into your swag. And an even better thing is before you get in, say you've been wearing flip-flops all day or you got dirty feet or you just sweaty feet, do that with a bucket and just clean your feet before you hop in. It is the best feeling. If you don't have a steel bucket for a fire, just boil some water over your little burner if you've got a little stove and then mix it with some cold water and then you've got instant warm water to clean yourself with. No soap required. Radio, so washing the body. Well, I've used this one here occasionally, uh, which is a pocket shower. This one here, fits into this little bag. This one's starting to tear though at the top, unfortunately. But all it is, is you fill 10 litres in it, or this one here might be 15 litres, 10 litres. And it comes out like that. Now it runs for a long time, because only a little bit comes out, so you don't get much pressure. So the idea is, you soap yourself up, once you're a little bit wet, switch it off, soap yourself up, rinse it off, and you're done. Usually, I'll find seven to eight liters is enough for me. You can get uh, 12 volt showers, a few other things like that, but you have to be close to your vehicle to use it. These ones here, you can walk away from camp, find a tree and have a shower in privacy. Now, there are a few different types of these. This one here is the more expensive one, I think. I can't remember how much I paid for it. I had it for quite a while, but you can get some solar bags too. Those ones you can actually fill up beforehand and transport and you leave it out in the sun. This one here is open at the top, you can't do it. You've got to have a running stream with your own water. Something to add to the showers. Now I don't really, do, I don't really bother with this, but what do you got there? Shampoo and conditioner. Oh, hang on. Make sure he's got some audio. Shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> Alright, and... They'll be expensive when you buy a small, so you were saying before yeah. that you... You only buy them once and then you fill them up from a big one. At home? Yeah. Okay. And we mainly use, well, you mainly use this in the caravan park, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like, out here, we have the bush out. I don't really bother asking people to borrow the shampoo, but when we're at a caravan park, I usually hit up either you or Torben for the shampoo. So, travel shampoo, top it up at home. A bit like your tomato ketchup. Those little ones you get, top them up at home, bring them to camp, save your money. Another very valuable item are your baby wipes. And I even think there's a company that make, that make these with a different label saying camping wipes. Don't be fooled, just get the baby wipes, they're a lot cheaper. And get the fragrance free ones, because you can even clean your dishes with them. And these, these are awesome for cleaning yourself. 
And before you do like your bucket thing, I highly recommend using some wipes first to get the most of the grit off. You're in the comfort of your own tent. You got your baby wipes. You wake up in the morning, give yourself a nice wipe downstairs and then get changed. And then when you're out, if the fire's still going, just burn your paper in there, otherwise stick it in the rubbish bin. That is a great way to start your morning, is being nice and clean down there. Another good thing about baby wipes is when you go to do your business in the bush. And of course, carry some extra rolls of toilet paper with you and a shovel. I'll see you in a bit. Flip-flops, thongs, jandals, wherever you're from, they got a name. And these are worth their weight in gold when you're camping. You take your boots off, your socks off, everything. You're laying in your nice warm tent, swag, whatever it is. You want to get out for a twinkle in, a, in the middle of the night. Have a pair of these. Keep your feet clean, go do your business, come back in. Your feet are still clean. That is one of the number one things with camping is keeping your feet clean. You don't want crap in your sleeping bag, sand, dirt, stuff like that, because you might be on a 10 day trip perhaps. You're going to be sleeping with that dirt in your swag the whole time. Toothbrush kit. I know this one might be seem obvious to people, but I have a few pointers to make here. Some people bring those disposable toothbrushes. I don't see the point. You're wasting your money. Just get a bloody toothbrush. What I do, I go to the shop, I buy a toothbrush, I replace it with the home one. The home one comes with me camping and that stays with me until it is completely kaput. I used to only bring these little ones. The problem was on a longer trip, this one might be halfway done already and I'd run out. So I swapped to a slightly bigger one and then I carry this little one as emergency in case this one runs out. Because you don't want to be using other people's toothpaste. Just a bit gross. I also carry mouthwash. Mainly if I end up with a throat infection or uh, I get a cold or flu while I'm out in the bush, this is worth its weight in gold. Especially the stuff that's got the um, antiseptic in it. And it all goes in a bag and it stays in my vehicle. So it's always there, no matter where I am. Even if I'm not camping, this is in the vehicle. So you need a water course, near a river, a stream or whatever. If there's water nearby, there are mosquitoes nearby. You can get these citronella bands. Uh, they'll last a couple of days if you wear them constantly. And I'll tell you what, they definitely do work. I'm usually the chosen one when it comes to mosquitoes, but I haven't been bitten once this time. Touch wood. We're still on insect bites, and this time we're talking about tick bites. Now, ticks can be a bit of a problem in certain areas, especially along the coastal areas in Western Australia and definitely out here in the, in the fixed scrub as well in the bush. So what I've started to do now is I've got this tea tree oil and you mix it one part of tea tree oil with two parts of water. And I've got one of these old spray things that used to clean my glasses with, um, like an optical cleaner, which sprays. And with this, I'll spray the cufflings around my boots uh, where my socks are. So my recommendation is because Brian mixed a bigger batch of this uh, a while ago, when he went to use it again, it, it all evaporated. So I'm not sure if there's something in this tea tree oil that goes with water that just, it all evaporates. So we've now opted to mix it in a, a tiny one. So if it should disappear, we just mix a new batch and it doesn't take long. And I'll recommend if you do this, keep a bottle of tea tree oil in your vehicle somewhere. Now on to a specific type of first aid kit. I carry three first aid kits with me, but I'm only going to talk about this one here. The other ones are more trauma, road accident, and serious stuff like that. This one here 
kind of covers all bases. It's like a survival pack, and I'm pretty sure it says survival pack on it too, yep. Modular first aid survival pack, and that's pretty much what it is. I have no idea what brand it is. I got this from a hardware store, but I'm sure others will do something similar. Um, perhaps not as cool as this one, but this is awesome. As you can see, it's got everything in here. So you got your bites and stings. So this is after you've been bitten. You got your SOS, which will have like a whistle, uh, emergency blanket, uh, stuff for camping. I think it's even got a fire igniter, but we're not really talking about that here. And then we got like your essentials um, for your shock, stuff like that. But more to the point of what we're talking about here is, is this prevention for outdoors. Now you don't have to go and buy all these little individual things. If you get one of these kits, you can add the things that are missing to it and it's always gonna be there. You keep this in your vehicle, it's always gonna be there. And another good thing here is about burns and scalds, common injury at camp, and you minor cuts and wounds so you can clean your wounds and stuff like that. So I think this is really important to your comfort and cleanliness at camp as well. And I'll get into more of these first aid kits and, and prevention stuff like that in a different video. I just wanted to share this one with you here. Another little thing that I do, might seem a bit strange to some people, bar of soap, I will scratch it on the end of the table or rock or whatever I got, just to get those little bits there. And then I'll get my bottle, which I usually have pre-pierced a hole in, like so. Now this is to save water, because you may not have much there. And if you've got, um, say you've been working on the vehicle, we've been repairing something on the vehicle, a bit of sand will help get that grit out. And then rinse it off. It's even better if you get someone else to hold the bottle for you while you do this. And that's how much water we used. Quite effective. Even good for cleaning your cups and stuff with as well, which I sometimes do. Whoa. And if you're like this fella here who brings a electric shaver, you can do that too. By the way, what do you call a man without a beard? Uh, Have a guess. What do you call a man without a beard? A woman. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. And I hope you got some good tips on how to stay clean in the bush. We've been asked so many questions about it, especially in the comments below on our trip videos. That's mainly where all those questions have been asked. So if you have any more questions or any suggestions for another tip video, put them down below. Love to hear from you. And you can support the creation of content like this at patreon.com slash Ronnie Dahl. Please do subscribe and check out these other two videos that have tips as well about camping. I'll see you then.